Hi Charlie, so quick look on how we get our control sorted with Leica kit into a Komatsu Intelligent Dozer or any Topcon machine control system really. So this data that Alex sent me here are his local coordinates um, of the stations on site and this is the data that I asked for. So this is them surveyed in WGS84. Um, so there's a little bit of editing to do. Um, we want to create a CSV file similar to this, but we want to take the, the local coordinates first. Um, so I'm just going to cut this. Uh, paste them here. Oh. Enable editing. There we go. So cut these. So these next, uh, the next three fields here, we want to fill with the latitude, longitude, and height. And you'll see the, there's question marks here where the decimal place once was. Um, the negative means we're working in, in the west, which is good. But again, we're going to have to put a decimal place in here and um, remove all these other digits. So if we take the um, AG1, for example, what it should look like for our file is 55 decimal place. And then just the numbers after that, no more in inserts. So four, five. One five two eight one six three. So it will probably default to eight decimal places. You'll see here, which is absolutely fine. Um, if you're good on Excel, you can go and replace, um, like replace decimal place with nothing, um, and you'll work out a way. Their their top one did have a format file, which they, they say they don't have. So I only know one way of doing it, and it's um manually editing in here. So longitude would save as a negative. The vital part here is where this says three, there it should always be two decimal places. So we need to insert a zero in here. Otherwise you'll get massive error in 3D Office when you actually do the transformation. So that's going to read as uh, 0342 and just continue with the digits as they are. And your your heights just put it straight forward just as is. And then we do the same here, same for the next one, and so on and so on. So I'm going to cheat here and show you one that I made earlier. Here we go. So you'll notice all the zeros that I've input here. Um, as I said, it's, it's vital you, you do that. If you ever get an error, just go back and make sure that there is a um, a decimal two digits in your minute area there. So save that as a CSV. Um, we then go to 3D Office, create a new project, go into your project options, make sure that you've got your eastern northern elevations around the right way. It's not defaulted to US survey feet. Press OK to that. So project import control points from text file. So you'll land here in a blank screen um, if you haven't done this before. And you basically want to create your custom format. So I'm going to delete this one just to make it easier to see. And this is what you're basically going to create, your point ID, east and northern height, lat, long height. So press new format, give it that heading. Then you're going to add the files, the line types. So the first one will be your point name. And then your append, you want everything to have a trailing comma after it. So then you would just hit OK. You would then add another one. This time it's going to be your easting. Point easting. Make sure you select trailing comma. And then so on for your north, your height, your lat, your long, your height. Okay. When you go to the last one, um, your WGS84 height, you want to leave that with nothing. So where everything else has a trailing comma, this last one will put to nothing. Okay. Um, once you've done that, if you go to import rules, 
um, add an import rule and you can skip header lines, number of lines one, if you maybe have header lines in your, your text file. So I've already got mine, mine created here. So we just hit next and go looking for that file that we, we just saved and finish. Um, if nothing happens here, like mine's doing at the moment, it's because it's still open in Excel. So just close them down and then the file will come in. It may look like there's nothing there. Um, you could zoom extents, but just go straight into project, then control points, and you'll see them here. And we need to edit them. So highlight the point and press edit. And then we want to tick these boxes, use it for the horizontal localization and use it for the vertical localization. And you can see the digits here. This is the, the information that was originally sent to me. Uh, press OK. Yeah, you can double click on the points, but you, you basically need to do this for each point. As you do, you, you'll see your error appearing down the right hand side. Um, so you can be confident with your, your localization as, as you do it. If for any reason I brought this one in and it was showing me like a, a hundred mil error, I would simply just delete it from this box. So fire through these. I probably didn't need to do all of these, but we're nearly there. See if what the error is like. Straight away, you can see there's no major issues. We've got 13 mil here in position. It, it, it looks ideal. So just press OK to this. And there we have our control points on the job. OK. Um, what we can do here, you can export the control points. You can export them straight out by going to project export control points to DC3 file. That is the calibration file that, that the dozer will read. Okay. Um, if you did that, you would just save it onto your USB in no particular folder. Alternatively, if you were feeling pretty adventurous, you could go to your tin. Um, import your model. I think I saved some of yours. Yep. So I've taken this Hamilton regrade. It's quite nice. You can see that it lands with, within the site, site control. You could then go to your line work, import your LN3 file. Yep. Um, if you wanted you could mess about with it more. You can go to options, turn off your triangulation, for instance. You could also go to tin view 3D simulation. And you could actually have a scoot about your site in the dozer. You can just use your mouse to drag, have a look about it, make sure everything looks as, a, as it should be. You can use your cursors and stuff and, and watch how the, the dozers working on site. There's various different settings you can play about with in here if you if you wanted to. Anyway, enough of that. But now we've got our control, we've got our line work, we've got our triangulation. So if you wanted, you could just go to file and save, or sorry, project, uh, yeah, basically, if you just save that file, it's going to save it as a TP3 file. That TP3 file can be imported at the um, in the dozer in projects. So when you go to project, copy in the project, it's going to copy in the project Charlie, and then it will automatically bring in the surface. It will automatically bring in the layer of the line work. It will automatically bring in the control file. Alternatively, um, you can just keep them all, all separate. I don't have a USB handy, which is an amateur mistake for me. Basically, um, when you're in the dozer, This is just a, a simulator of the screen that we will be looking at in the morning. 
you could go to file project and then hit copy from your USB and that project that we just saved would be here and then the whole job would just fire through. Um, alternatively, what you're going to have to do is go to file projects new. Hamilton, preload data from current active project. You probably don't want to do that, so deselect that, press OK. We now have nothing. So you'll be going file control project um, coordinate system and you want to use your local cords only and when you do that you'll see your you will um see your points here we can import obviously this isn't yours but you'll see your, your points will just appear here um, if you had forgotten to double click on them in 3D Office, then you would just do that in here, highlight them, hit edit, and there's the same checkboxes. So once that's in, we can go File, Surfaces, Import, Import or TN3, where from USB, bring it in, and then you'll do the same for your line work, Layers, Import, go find your line work. Obviously this data I'm bringing in isn't yours so it's not really going to work properly. And then um, and then we continue on from there. But hopefully you find that helpful with the um, calibration file and hopefully we don't need to do too many of them. And if you find any quicker ways of um, generating the Excel spreadsheet when it comes out of Captivate you can let me know and um, that would be really great. All right, cheers.